Dean Lister is known as the boogeyman in the ring. Dean Lister is a world champion cage fighter. If I told myself that something seems scary, and I have to do it now. People were very ready to fight, but they heard my name, and I scared them. That John Donaher leg lock game is very high level, man. It all started with Dean Lister. I'd love to bring up some guys like Dean Lister. Huge pleasure for you to have me here. He's a practitioner that actually revolutionized the sport of jiu-jitsu. And he said one sentence, which completely changed my outlook. Because why would you ignore 50% of the human body? What, what got you into jiu-jitsu? Like, how did you get started in all, in all this? A year before Operation Desert Storm, the Pentagon tested its doctrine of overwhelming force in the invasion of Panama. <laughs> I grew up in Central and South America as a kid, and, and we invaded Panama. And so I, lived in, I was living in Panama uh, in 1989. So it was a war, the invasion, but it was like Iraq for a few days. It was, it was real serious. People were shooting out windows, and the tensions were getting more, let's say, harsh. They were growing. Uh, there was somewhat of a humorous response here. One official at the White House called uh, Noriega and Panama the mouse that roared, for example. We were driving home on, on a bus, and there was a, there was a coup. The Panamanian, uh, one of the uh, Noriega, he was the, di the dictator at the time, Manuel Noriega, a pretty infamous person in history. General Noriega's reckless threats and attacks upon Americans in Panama created an imminent danger to the 35,000 American citizens in Panama. So after this happened, after the invasion happened, a few weeks later, uh, I, I had to go back to, to junior high. So everyone knew an uncle or a brother or someone who got killed by the Americans or in, in the American invasion. So me being a little American white kid who didn't speak Spanish at the time, uh, nerdy kid, it was just a, it was a recipe for, for problems. And so I got a lot of, let's say, some drama, mm. fights and stuff like that happened a lot. And that's probably the reason why I wanted to learn how to get into, uh, you know, learning how to fight was, was pretty important to me as a kid. Meet San Diego's very own Lethal Weapon. Dean Lister was a league champ at Hilltop High School in wrestling. Uh, I, I wrestled in high school, and then I hear about this thing called Sambo. And I, okay, I, submission, what's submission? Oh, you, you can get your arm broken? Well, Jerry Matsumoto, who passed away, unfortunately, a few years ago, well, he's, a, he's the one who, who confirmed my interest in submission. Then probably the longest lasting coach I was Fabio Santos. You know, Halls brought me into the, the, the Figueiredo Magalhães Academy, the Gracie Academy. And then in 82, Halls had an accident and died. And, uh, you know, Hickson pretty much took us over to train with him. And I pick up a black belt magazine and I'm looking and I'm like, what? Hoist is in LA. So I called him and he's like, what? What are you doing in LA? Oh man, he goes, Oh man, we're preparing for this big giant event that we're gonna make. You have to come down. When you get here, I'll teach, I'll tell you what we're planning. What's the mission? What's the mission? I'm like, all right, I'm going. That's how I end up here in San Diego. Who was your first generation of students that is still active today? That well, is still you fighting? know, I have Dean Lister, I had uh, Jaco, me, Link, uh, Riggs, uh, Higgs, Riggs, Jeff Higgs. Yeah. <laughs> When did you get into fighting? How did your first fight and all that kind of stuff, how did that get going? Our first fight happened in the year 2000. You see, you see the, the guys in the cage, there's blood everywhere, and you're like, oh man, and there's people screaming. And at those days, it was a little more, it was more crude. It was kind of cool in a way, because it was more like unexplored territory. In the year 2000, I was in New York, training with, at Hensel Gracie's Academy. I was staying with Matt Serra. At that time, I was a purple belt. I forget what Don, I forget what belt he was, but, uh, I mean, we had a few philosophical conversations. Dean Lister was invited by Matt Serra to come to the Hensel Gracie Academy. We were there late one night, and, and I forget who, but I was, I was having some success versus black belts at that academy with leg locks. I was doing more than almost anyone else, and he actually said, like, like he didn't say, like, what's this BS you're doing, but it's kind of like, what, like, what's your deal? He was doing something which was unusual, and so I talked with him just briefly after class, and I said, you know, that's interesting what you're doing with these Achilles locks, because. I don't really do that at all. It's not something I do. And he said one sentence, which completely changed my outlook. He said, why would you ignore 50% of the human body? And I said, you know, it's like, it's 50% of the human body. Like, why would you ignore it? And he kind of like looked away. 
so it impacted his, his mind uh, 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 apparently I think it's my friend Jeff Higgs who said it to me one day and I just it retained in my head for some reason you know so it's pretty cool yeah I did say that one day I did say that yeah I'm a big believer in the idea that someone can come into your life for a very short period of time and have a massive influence. I was invited one year, 2001, to go there to uh, United Arab Emirates. And my dad, old retired Marine, he said, you know, son, you're doing this jujitsu thing. I think you should give it two more years, see if you can do it professionally. So I was pushing it. 2003 qualifier. There you go. Yeah, that was 2003. Um, so actually that you're mentioning the most transformative and positive and best day of my life is because the day before, I mean, I was in great, the best shape of my life, 27 or something, you know, which is a great prime age for fighting sports. My first match was against Ilya Latifi from Sweden. He's half Albanian. Very, I got him in a guillotine, but I was very tired after the match. I'm like, I'm in the bed. What, what's wrong with me? Next match was Jean Tri Barrow. And it was an even match until, I don't know, six minutes in. It was like even. And then I made one mistake. I, I did a sit through and I looked the wrong way, which I, I know at age 14, I know this mistake. I made this mistake and that's when the match just, he steamrolled 8-0 on. I'm out and I don't have a good chance again. I asked, they go, well, you're the fifth ultimate. And I'm out of the tournament. I'm like, oh man, what am I going to do? That was my last chance. I go to the, the table. I want to be in the absolute, come on, I want a second chance. And they said, well, Lister, you're going to be the fourth alternate. That means that four people have to get injured or sick or not show up or, or whatever. That's the only way you'll get in. But I go back to my, my hotel and uh, everyone else goes out to drink and stuff. And I stay, I stay in like maybe I'll be in. And the next day I woke up with no pressure. And uh, I don't know why, it's one of those days I woke up like with a smile. I go downstairs and I'm having like pancakes. Matter of fact, I wore my Brazilian tighties. <laughs> I wore them just in case. And I go up there, they're like, hey, I'm in. Next day it turns out, one guy's like, I just want my division, I, I don't want to do it. Another guy got injured. Another guy, Kako, came in, a bunch of stitches over his eye. Mm. Well, he had a fight the night before. And then um, Eric Paulson, you know Eric Paulson? I remember a long time ago, my friend Eric Paulson. He showed me a tape of Shoto. He showed me a tape when I was about to go to Japan to fight the first Valetudo. He looked at me and he said, Dean, I gave you my spot. He goes, Dean, you have a golden aura around you. I don't know how he knew that, but he made a bet with Morris Ferry. First match, Nate Mark Ward, tough guy. I beat Mike Ward, second match. Well, that's today's Salo Guevara, seven time world champion at the moment. I'm a brown belt. I was mounted, I'm up by two points. The last, last minute, I need off the run. My third match was against Marcio Cruz Pei de Pano, and that guy was the shush of that day. He was a monster. I've been in submissions, and I've been like, wouldn't it be cool if I got out? You know, because I, I, I had Pei de Pano had me in a submission for five minutes, the head and arm, and he, the crowd was drowning out, like it's getting silent because he squeezed me so hard. Wouldn't it be cool? And uh, I did eventually. So the, the way you state things to yourself is pretty important. Because of that loss, literally because of that loss, I did not look the wrong way. Got, got this back at one. No believer. My, my first coach, my original coach, Fabio Santos, and we're, we're good today, but we had a time where we, we were not on speaking terms. And it, it, be, it was because I was doing Abu Dhabi and I was fighting and he wanted me to do more gi. I said, no problem. And I wanted to fight in pride. And then of course, you'll see eventually I did fight in pride, but he, he really got offended by this. There's a, there's a, 
a lot of history about Lucha Libre, which is no gi, and Jiu Jitsu, which was gi. Like, that's how he was raised. Gi is good and no gi is bad. Oh, you want to do Abu Dhabi? No, no, you have to do the Mundials. You know, and so I'm like, well, I want to do this stuff. And we had a big falling out. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to win Abu Dhabi. Or uh, let's let's make that my goal. Now he gets cocked and they go, face off, I shoot him. He also is guilty. And here at that moment, the best guilty in the world. As soon as I saw his eyes, and he was like, he couldn't believe it. I knew I had him. I knew I had him. Got his guard, put lock, and I went to my big, big position. He looked for this stuff. And then, oh man, I, I, I thought it was me. You know? in, in 2003, I won with what's today known as the 50 50 position. And I did not come up with that position, like, of course not. There's guys in Japan doing it and stuff, but it's something that no one taught me and it was working for me as well. Ironically, in Brazil, I speak Portuguese. What's this uh, bullshit? This uh, gringo is doing this bullshit. This is terrible, this is not jujitsu. But I was a little disappointed, you know, because some people I looked up to were saying, you know, what I'm doing is not jujitsu, you know? The gentle art, you know? For our tournament, yep. final tonight, it's underway. Dean Lister, the world's greatest grappler, taking on the heart and soul of Pride Fighting Championships, Akira Shoji. Lister as the feeling of process continues, but Lister, who was known for a shot, just it's it's uh, Shoji is not been able to do much inside the guard of Lister. Look, and he, he caught one arm now. Lister caught one arm, and there's the triangle. Oh. And the only thing he can do is a, a rampage slam. And that's it. Yeah, you hear it, you boss. He's trying. He's tapping. And it's over. Slow wow. triangle choke there by Dean Lister. Pride Grand Prix Pride was, I can't, I can't even describe how Pride, when I walked out in front of 100,000 people, watching me it's just the energy it's it's a i can't describe it's electric it's something that i can't really describe it unless you have lived it it's just absolutely insane and and, and that's like a cartoon like a dream I, and I was a super fight champion in 2005. I faced the legendary Zizek Machado in, in uh, Long Beach, California. And then I came back and then I, I tore my bicep. Uh, I needed surgery. I was out for a few years. Came back in 2011. <laughs>
What has been your most rewarding achievement? Yeah, it's, it's both both my Abu Dhabis, both of them. One was when no one really knew, well, they knew who I was, but it was, you know, no way I could win. And the other one was 2011 when people thought there's no way because he's past his prime, he's hurt, you know, he, you know, he talks when he's from, he's, he's had concussions, his arms hurt, there's no, and then I won. And that, that was probably, I don't know, those two days, just, just that, yeah, all the, all the years of training and it worked out. And I've said this even in 2011 when no one thought I could win, before I always knew this, it's like the Olympics of submissions. Some people can say it favors jujitsu people. Some people say it favors wrestlers. You know, it's a little more of a scramble. Dean, you're getting ready to get introduced into the Hall of Fame. How does that feel? Big honor. Um, it's kind of funny. It, it, it came kind of fast. Uh, I've done the sport for a long time, but it feels like yesterday at the same time, you know? Uh, but now you have fighters like Craig Jones, Gordon Ryan, all, all these guys that will go for your legs. They will mount you. They will pass your guard. They will take you down. They will sweep you. So now we have a, a pretty much a complete type of fighter. There's things that have been used thousands of years ago that are now coming into play again. There's things that are being invented for the first time. The sport is just really going on and on, and it's, it's awesome to see. And I'm very, very honored to be uh, you know, uh, selected to be among the Hall of Fame.